is Colin Riddell. Um, I go under the name of Colin Who Cares because uh, the issue that I am running is a, an emotive issue because it affects the Indigenous population in Australia. And I don't belong to any organisation. I'm just a person who got upset about 16 months ago when I heard they uh, kill a lot of turtles and dugongs in Australia and I found out there are really no regulations. So I've been campaigning ever since. Mm. When you talk about the indigenous population, it also often means that they, that they throw back at you, it is our tradition, you know, don't interfere. Yet I read on your website that um, these animals are at risk and they're killed at high speed, so to speak. So, I mean, there are way too high numbers involved. Yeah, well, the animals that we're talking about are the uh, marine sea turtles and there's seven um, species in, in the world and we've got six of those species in our waters. We've got the, um, and the leatherback, the loggerhead and the olive ridley are all vulnerable to extinction. And the dugong is on the world uh, conservation list for vulnerable to extinction. And uh, there's no regulation on how many they can kill. So we know with the Japanese they can kill 900 uh, whales in a year. That's the quota they have. But in Australia, an Indigenous person can go out there today and kill 900 turtles on their own if they chose, or 900 dugongs. Mm. So uh, that's the problem. And... The, there was a, a meeting in the United Nations uh, with, in Abu Dhabi on the 7th of October where they declared the dugong will be extinct worldwide within 40 years. So wow. the uh, issue that I'm running uh, needs to be addressed and, and addressed now. We may already be too late. Mm. So obviously um, when, they, when, they, when they kill these animals in, in the vast numbers that they do, it's, it's not for consumption. So what are they used for? Oh, it is for consumption, but it's also there's an illegal meat trade uh, thriving in Australia where they uh, cut it up and they, they cry back it in proper packs and they ship it all around Australia. And it sells for $50 a kilo for turtle meat and up to $150 a kilo for dugong meat. So uh, there's not only for um, community consumption, there is a thriving trade going, and, and I've uncovered that too. Your concerns, uh, you know, because when you, when you were saying it sort of in the beginning, because it, it involves indigenous people, do you find that then um, people are less um, or more reluctant to be on your side to highlight this? How, how, is, how, do, how do we have to picture this? Uh, you know, because sometimes they play this card like, you know, we're the indigenous people, we are under threat ourselves, stay out of it, you don't understand us, you know, all that kind of stuff that we hear all the time. Yeah, Thomas, I've, I've had all that and I've had threats and I've, I've been called a racist, but it's an animal uh, sustainability issue. It's not a racial issue. It's just unfortunate that the only people in Australia that are able to kill a turtle or a dugong legally is an Indigenous Australian. And, and I've copped all of that, but there's a thing that was formed back in 1993, the Native Title Act, and in Section 211 there, it clearly states that uh, they can use it for their own consumption, but the commercial use is banned. And yet we have uncovered there is a... Um, a commercial use for it, yet the government authorities are reluctant because of the indigenous vote and the sensitivities with being indigenous. It's a bit like in America. I think the um, American Indians now, they seem to have a, an untouchable status and and uh, I've just been relentless and, I, and I've, um, I've got a great helper, the, the late, great Steve Irwin um, that uh, passed away here in Cairns. His father, Bob Irwin, helps me with this and um, I've got a lot of the uh, shadow ministry helping me. Actually, tomorrow I'm taking them down to meet some indigenous people who actually have a moratorium in place in their own native title area and uh, I'm taking a shadow minister environment down there tomorrow and we'll be on television here in, in Australia. But it has had Australia-wide um, publicity. Uh, Australia, as you know, is a, is a massive country yeah. and I've been on radio in all parts. I've been in radio in Perth, I've been radio in radio in Adelaide, alerting the rest of Australia because the turtle and dugongs only are in the northern waters of Australia because it's the warmer waters, so range from around Western Australia right around to Sydney. And um, they weren't aware of this problem, but me being um, a foreigner really from the southern part of Australia wasn't aware of this problem I got up here, so I've highlighted it and, and, I've, and I've copped a lot of flack. But like I said, I spoke for an hour on uh, National Indigenous Radio on Tuesday and I explained to the Indigenous Nation exactly why uh, I have a concern. And today there was a lot of feedback on the, on the radio again. They call it Talk Black over here. Um, and they express their support for what I'm doing and they can understand why I'm doing it. So uh, I have massive support from the non-Indigenous population, mm. but now I'm getting a lot of support from the Indigenous population. So because, things I mean, will that, change. That's what you really need, isn't it? Because obviously it, it, it needs to stop now. It's, it's not that you can do this forever. And, you know, and as, as nice as it is to be, to be sort of exposed to this and be a spokesperson, there's little point uh, if the killing goes on. It, there's no point whatsoever in continuing, but I'm one of these blokes that never gives up. Uh, I've um, 
I have a massive support base and um, I've got a website and a lot of people have looked at that. I think you've looked at it yourself. We've had over 14,500 people look at it, but a lot of big groups around Australia, Ocean Defenders, Ocean Guardians on Facebook, they've joined the, the program. Animal Rights Australia got a national petition out. Um, I've been goading Greenpeace because uh, you know, they, they're always up in arms about um, whale killing, but here on our own front doorstep, they're killing up to 20,000 sea turtles and freshwater turtles a year and up to 2,000 dugongs in Queensland alone. And now the world population is supposed to be uh, 50,000 dugongs and we're supposed to have the biggest population in the world. So uh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to work out if, if they keep, keep killing them in those numbers, they will, will be extinct in 40 years and Australia will be responsible for the next Tasmanian tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem that you always have is because you were, you were just saying like how, how, how vast your country is. So if it is a problem to highlight this in your own country, imagine how difficult it is to uh, highlight this in the world because when you talk to people about a dugong, they have to look it up <laughs> in yeah, Europe. You know, yeah, like, what, the, yeah. what, the, what, what the heck is a dugong? <laughs> yeah, well, well, a dugong actually is um, closely related to the manatee, which I think everyone in yeah. America knows what manatee is. And um, it's a very, very similar creature. It's a big, slow, clumsy creature that only breeds every five to seven years, and it doesn't grow to sexual maturity until it's 16 years old, and they grow... Well, they live till about 70 years of age, and, and um, they're a, a mammal, and they're colourblind, so they don't really know who's going to kill them. Like in Australia, we've got the Great Barrier Reef, where a, a lot of your international tourists uh, fly over here to have a look at our Great Barrier Reef, and unfortunately, they can be floating along there looking at a beautiful dugong or a sea turtle, and an indigenous person can jump off the boat beside them and cut it up in front of their eyes, and yeah. there's no cruelty laws that apply to an indigenous person, so they can kill them in any way. They can cut them up alive. If people look at my website, you'll see a video there where a turtle was cut up in Australian waters at Torres Straits, cut up alive on the beach. And if anyone ever wants to be sick, you watch that video because it made me sick. And I'm, yeah. could I'm you, a big could you give out Could you give out your website address? Yeah, uh, it's a, it's pretty simple. I, I keep it really basic. Um, if you put on the old HTTP double dot forward slash forward slash and then the word dugong, D-U-G-O-N-G, and, and it's the word and, not that little funny thing, turtles, so it's dugong and turtles, dot webs, dot com forward slash. Okay. And um, everything that I've ever done in the last 16 months is on there. Everything on there is factual, and I don't go on any rumour in your window. I don't put up with any racial discrimination or racial taunts. Um, and you, if they have a good read of that, they'll see what's happening in Australia. And I think the rest of the world will be shocked when they do yeah. do. do and I also think it. we have to we have to come away from this. I mean, you know, uh, this this whole idea is that that you sort of you can you, like you know the same thing when 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 people uh, campaign ab against uh, the Japanese whaling, they're not anti-Japan or anti-Japanese people. They're against whaling, and so they turn around and say like you know you don't understand your culture. So they use it as a, as a punchline as a weapon. I think we have to come away from that because clearly what you are doing is highlighting an atrocity that needs to end and if we would finally start seeing ourselves uh, or, or our animal kin as equals we wouldn't have all that that crap talking about racism all the time <laughs> you know so, so, so yeah. it's a problem in itself and so so and that's what I often say to people like you know if, if you look at these things the, the problem that you have is for instance um, because I have a couple of hours on the international uh, Animal Rights Day, I approached other community radio stations in England and offered them footage if they don't do anything on that day. And they say, oh, do you have a local angle? I said, I don't have a local angle. I'm doing an international show. And I do have British interviews, you know, but I have great footage. It's about the footage, not about where, where it has been recorded. So you can see how difficult the whole idea sometimes is to go abroad because people, I don't know why we are, we are, we are so focused on our own boundaries, you know. Yeah, and that's what that's what I was up against too. And people weren't really aware that it was a, a, an issue until I raised it. And now they're becoming aware. And like I said, I've worked all the southern states where, the, where they don't see a, a dugong slash manatee or a sea turtle because they all have to come up to the northern waters of Cairns, Port Douglas, Gulf of Carpentaria, Darwin or Western Australia to see one. And now they're, they're aware that it's, it's a worldwide international problem. It's not just an Australian problem with a few indigenous people going out and killing a turtle or a dugong. It's a massive problem, which will lead to the extinction of three species of turtles and will lead to the extinction of a dugong. Now, when those things are gone, they're gone, they're gone. And um, I'm going to do my level best and through programs like your own and through 
um, international um, medium such as Facebook and Twitter and every yeah. other medium I can possibly use. I'm using everything at my disposal to make the world aware of it. If I fail, I fa the animals lose, not me. So I can't afford to lose. And the likes of Bob Irwin, I think everyone in the world knows Bob Irwin's son, Steve Irwin, was yeah, the greatest absolutely. conservationist. Um, the world's ever seen out of Australia, and um, he's and ended up to his even, neck. Even Fisher, but uh, uh, Fisher, but latest boat is called Steve Irvin. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, 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 I yeah, think, well, so, so, you know, so that, that that's that's all good, really, <laughs> to have that. The other thing is that you know, obviously, when you were saying um, for how much um, dollars, you know, or money they they actually sell that, is the selling of. Um, dugong meat or turtle meat, is that a way to go and say, like, can we probably stop this? Let's just say if you can't find the indigenous people because they, they are sort of untouchable, would it be possible to say, like, you know, we have to stop the selling of it, or is it done in, in channels that you can't even control? Well, it's done in such a way that it's open, and the, and the authorities are too gutless or weak to do anything about it. Now, I expose that it's coming through the Cairns airport, and 60 kilos a day, seven days a week, packed up in eskies, and, and they have turtle eggs in the eskies too, and up to 200 eggs. Now, no one knows whether those eggs are loggerhead, leatherback, olive ridley, or green turtle. They have no idea. So, And it just keeps continuing. And, and I, I alerted the authorities back in April. They still have never done an investigation due to the sensitivities with indigenous, but it's clearly a breach of the Native Tile Act for commercial use of a, uh, a native species. The, the indigenous people here in Australia are allowed to kill 50 native species of animal, possums, crocodiles, mm. animals that we're not allowed to touch. Now, it's not because we're not allowed to do it. It's just ridiculous that we're killing native species. Now, uh, Bob Irwin, he fights all the time for kangaroos, for wombats, for the, um, for the freshwater turtle. Uh, he's joined this campaign. They're trying to build a big marina down there at Tin Can Bay, which is um, down yeah, there. Yeah, I read about uh, that. The Gold Coast. <laughs> and since there's and money another, involved, you know, very likely they're, gonna, they're just going to build it. Yeah, oh, well, there's a lot of opposition, and um, he's trying to get a big million, million signatures. And if you go onto my website and have a look in the link sec, you'll see the link to that where people overseas can can sign and try and help Bob Irwin out and stop that. Well, if they build this marina, it's a thirty million dollar marina. It'll wipe out seagrass beds, which wipes out sea turtles, wipes out dugong. We have du uh, dolphins that come in there daily, wild dolphins, and people hand feed them, uh, and they've they've tamed themselves. They were never enclosed or anything, and all those things are at risk and. If people around the world do nothing and shows like yourself, you know, don't highlight these things, it's going to continue until we'll be the only one standing here on the planet looking at ourselves. Yeah, I mean, the, the Facebook thing. What I noticed that um, there's a lot of good people on there, and I and I remember talking to uh, a gentleman called Dave Neal here in the UK about. The, um, the 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 bear bile farming in China, and he told me that actually the um, petition signing from outside of China, all the people on Facebook and stuff, made a real difference. So I reckon if you have enough international support, that would make a difference. Is there a petition up somewhere? There's a petition on on my website um, in the link section too by Animal Rights Australia for my particular issue. There's also an issue um, in relation to Tin Can Bay, and there's another. Um, petition on my site for that too and also on my Facebook site. If they just look up Colin and then in the middle Colin who cares Riddell R I W D E W L have a look at my Facebook page. All the links are on there too and also on the website that I gave you before. And if people actually do something about it, you sit there and you listen to these shows and you think, Oh that's so terrible but if you get off your bum, get in there, sign something, say something Things will change. I Absolutely. appreciate people's efforts. And you know what? It's a, it's a really good feeling when 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 you sign a petition and you think like so now I ha now now uh, the FBI has a file on me, and then you <laughs> you read somewhere that <laughs> actually made a difference. <laughs> yeah, and, and look, you can sit back in your lounge room and say to your kids or your grandkids, "I did something. Absolutely. I didn't sit there and watch that happen." And that's what I appeal to people. It's easy to sit there and say, "Oh, it's horrible," but just get off your bum, grab grab the pen or click the clicker. Click on that you, you're disgusted. They're usually normally a, a filled-in pro forma. You just have to click it, put your email address, and um, and it's recorded. Now, it was on the National Australian Television on Monday. It'll be on National Television again on um, the coming Monday, which is the 15th of November in Australia. It's International Steve Irwin Day, where everyone um, is encouraged to wear khaki like Steve did. 
And uh, I went out today and bought myself a, a, a Steve Irwin looking outfit with a shirt oh, and a turtle on it. I mean, the, and, this, this uh, interview, you know, this interview will be aired on the 10th of December, but um, I have to say this to my listeners, uh, I will not wear khaki because, you know, they're just not my collar. <laughs> but it's a great thing that you, that you, <laughs> it's a great thing that, that, that you have this because obviously, um, see, th- that's the funny thing about people. When Steve Irwin died, um, uh, half the world was mourning, and then a few Egypts went out and killed, uh, uh, um, what's it called, the animals that killed him? Yes, stingray. Yes, yeah, stingrays. And I thought, like, you know, that's the last thing he would have wanted. So, so um, you, you know, uh, rather than uh, using the anger that you have towards it, and you're using it for highlighting it, is a much better way of doing it. You know? It the other thing that, that you have is, in a, in a way that, you know, you have such a great heritage in your own country, and in Britain we have such a diversity um, uh, on animals. So, so here in, in the UK, which you know, I, I spent ten years in Ireland. So in the UK, there's much more awareness of animals because they're on our doorstep, and we have come to sort of respect them. But I think the problem that you're having, just like you were rightly saying, is because your country is so big that nobody knows what's going on the other end. Yeah, it's massive, Thomas. And uh, I was I was ashamed to hear here the other day that if there's a gold medal for wiping out species, Australia is miles in front. We've wiped out more species than any country in the world. We are the we are the gold medal champions, and that is a disgraceful medal to have hanging around our neck. Mm-hmm. And there's people like yourself highlighting the problem we've got here in Australia, and fools like me that put my head out there. And believe me, it's been a rough ride for the last <laughs> sixteen months. But I'm I'm six foot two, I'm 135 kilos. And uh, I love a good fight, mate. This is a yeah, fight yeah. the animals can't afford for me to lose. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's, uh, you know, and also, like, you know, it, I think it, 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 it takes... The other thing that I often have is that, <coughs> you know, um, having this animal rights show, so people say to me, like, oh, you must be gay because you're doing this. So there's a lot of people that have these ideas about, you know, when you, when you, when you sort of... When I have a bad day and I cry about all the animals that we've lost, all of a sudden you have these people, um, rather than saying, you're still doing a good job, they uh, compare you to another group, uh, so they are racist against gay people, and then they obviously, uh, and then they put me into that niche because I have an animal rights show. So, so there's, so, so it's great to see a guy like you because from the look at you, you know, people would think like you know you, you could be a biker or something. Yeah, well, I, I'm a big scary bloke, and actually, um, back in 2001, uh, I used to work at the Australian Defence Industries, which make bullets, bombs, missiles, and all that sort of <laughs> stuff for all our armed forces. They try to shut it down and. I run such a mad campaign down there and motivated so many people. It cost the government $330 million. Now, I've always done things for people. I've never done anything for animals. This is the first animal issue I've ever run, mm. and I'm treating it exactly the same. I target politicians, yeah. and uh, believe me, I've got national media attention, um, and we will win this argument, and we can't afford to lose. Like I said, if we, if we lose, the animals lose. And Actually, while we're talking now, I just received an email from Judy Irwin, who's Bob Irwin's wife, Mm-hmm. and um, they had another successful day today in the media. Uh, our issue is just rocketing around Australia, and if anybody Googles Bob Irwin, Tin Can Bay, if they're listening uh, to your show, you'll see a whole myriad of um, things, or just type in dugongs and turtles in Australia. You'll see everything we've been doing over the last year, and believe me, we've caused a, an uproar like you've never, ever seen in your life. But yeah. Australia and that, really knows what's happening. And that's so important. You know, I think the other thing is obviously that you have a, have a guy like Bob Irwin, so... Uh, so people, you know, it's it's easier to find to find you a cause than even on 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 Facebook and the internet and all that kind of stuff. That's all good. But here here's the rub. You know, usually what they say is that um, let's just say they would say, you know, um, this is the right of the indigenous people and they want uh, compensation. Is that a road to go down to? I mean, are they doing this purely for profit, or is there something um, <laughs> where you where you would say if they weren't allowed to do this? they would all starve. How does this work? No, they wouldn't starve. In Australia, we've got a, a thing called Centrelink, which is a um, fortnightly payment to anyone that doesn't have a job. Now, in, uh, every person in Australia is eligible for that if they're unemployed. They get a minimum of $424 a fortnight. That's a minimum. Indigenous people get a little bit more. I actually used to work for Centrelink, so I know exactly what they get. Now, <laughs> no, one is starv- no one is starving in Australia. Some of those communities, though... Um, they lack protein. There's not a lot of meat up there, and they use that as, as protein. But there's a lot of fish in the sea. And um, the, uh, what I'm asking for is a moratorium so we can determine how many numbers are left. And if it's still sustainable, continue with their traditional hunting, but on a regulated permit-based system so that 
if they if they are going to kill them, it is for very special occasions, which it was always supposed to be. But now they race out there. If you were getting married next weekend, Thomas, you and your mates would race out there and grab ten dugongs, twenty turtles, have a massive feast. And then if you if your cousin next week gets married, he might get and grab thirty or forty. It's turned into like a race, and that's what we've got to stop. If we're going to have a system that's for traditional use, now there's even doubt on that. I have knowledge of um, it was brought to Australia by the Japanese pearl divers. That's a, the tradition isn't that old. They've just turned it into a tradition, and it used to be like for what, what you call a wake. Uh, I think the Irish and English know exactly what a wake is. Um, after a funeral, they've turned it into um, a tradition where because they're the only ones allowed to do it, they're abusing the right. It's like everything. It's If you abuse it, you lose it. And they've mm. come to the, the um, circumstances now that kill so many and doing it so openly in front of people. It disgusts people to see an animal cut up with an axe. Like they, they kill a dugongs here, they cut them up with an axe or they tie a, a rope around their tail and drag them backwards with their boat and drown them. Or they pick up the little calf, put it in the boat, make it scream its head off. When the mother comes, they put a spear through it or they stuff paper down the, down the blowhole. It's a disgusting thing the way they're killing them because there's no cruelty laws that apply to them. Mm-hmm. And the numbers they take are disgraceful. So if they all have a look at that website, you'll see everything that they, they are doing. You'll see people here who are doing the right thing. There's one called James Epong. That's where we're going tomorrow, down to, to his people, his native title land. And I'll show the, the uh, shadow minister exactly what a, a good Indigenous person does in relation to preserving these animals where he protects nests, where he guards the beaches to stop people. The beaches where his, his native title country is on is 60 kilometres of um, ocean front. And there was 300 turtle nests there 20 years ago. There's now three. Wow. Now, what I'm doing now is so important, Thomas, and I really appreciate your show, um, getting out on the international stage, because if people around Australia or around the world don't realise how serious the problem here is here in Australia, I think everyone that should be pressuring the Japanese about the 900 whales should divert a bit of their attention back to Australia and say, Australia, how dare you hypocrites take Japan to the International Court of Justice in The Hague and complain about the Japanese killing 900 whales when you kill thousands upon thousands upon thousands of turtles and dugongs. Yeah, and I, I, I personally think, the world think that, 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 that all issues deserve attention. <laughs> that includes the whales. Um, but but you're right. The other thing that, that obviously is that um, you know that the Japanese are, 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 are uh, so um, exotic in our in our Western eyes that it's always uh, uh, easier also for the media to conjure up interest. <laughs> you know, so I think that's part yeah. of that. You know, <laughs> yeah. so so that, you know, you, you, there's a lot of these ideas. I, I had the pleasure <coughs> of talking to um, a Japanese-born um, animal rights activist who is currently at sea with Sea Shepherd, and uh, she really told me a, uh, and taught me a lot about the um, the Japanese psyche. You know, quite interesting. Um, but it's a different topic. But but you're absolutely right. I think uh, what people often do is, you know, um, I for for instance on my radio show because of the time limit that I'm sort of working under, I often do sort of single issue campaigns. Um, so um, I'm looking yep. at either sea creatures or land creatures, this kind of way, because people learn in bite size. But uh, but you're absolutely right. So what you're doing basically, I mean, that's one thing that, that people have to understand. What you're doing is damage control. Yeah, and, and the people that I've gathered around me during this campaign, I've got the, the probably the biggest media person in Australia. His name's Darren Hinch. He's called the human headline. Um, he's, <laughs> he's famous in Australia, and he's taken the issue up. He's always been a whale activist. Um, but he wasn't aware of this issue, and when I showed him the um, turtle um, video of getting cut up alive, he took it on with a passion. Uh, and also got Bob Irwin, who everyone wants to talk to, so no matter where we front, the media flock to him because they want to talk about Steve, they want to talk about Australia Zoo, they want to talk about how he's handling it now. You know, he's 71 years old. He's a tireless campaigner. He's a very private man. He's nothing like Steve, mm-hmm. but he's a, he's the biggest conservationist I've ever met in my life, and I love him to death. I'd, I'd have him for a father tomorrow. Yeah. And, and I, I also think like you know the, the the problem that you really have is that I'm always I'm always weary when when you have people say like I would like to talk to Bob uh, because he's a sort of celebrity. I always you know usually I I lose people there uh, because I think you know that that um, I I often talk to uh, campaigners that do something and I, I obviously he is a great campaigner but but oftentimes you know the media usually works best if they have someone with a good face and I understand that he would probably. Um, Get us more listeners, but I, but I'm always weary about the, the the whole concept of celebrityism. Yeah, well, in Australia, it sort of works both ways. Last week, I did another television interview because the the uh, Minister of the Environment and the that's the federal one and the state one came and had a meeting up here in Cairns. I pressured them so much that I made them come up here um, through all the all the protesting I've done and the politicians that I've been working against. 
and they held a meeting. They didn't even invite me. They filled it full of people who were uh, friendly to their cause, and they came out and said, there's no problem, and we don't need a moratorium. And um, I thought, well, they'd like to talk, the media would like to talk to Bob Irwin, but they said, no, we don't want to talk to him. We want to talk to you because you're a grassroots uh, roots activist and, and you're a fiery big bugger and uh, I did the interview and, and that surprised me but <laughs> in other, other situations they seem to only if Bob's there Bob will talk about my issue which gets it onto the national stage yeah. so it's sort of six of one and half a dozen the other but mm. believe me I'm a fireball and when, and when people see um, if you look on um, on YouTube under uh, Snake which is can spelt backwards uh, I have trouble spelling myself S-N-R-A-I-C Snake cans backwards You'll see a whole range of videos I've put on there with everything I've done. And I'm a fireball. I don't hold back. And I will do any interview and talk on any part of it. The Indigenous part doesn't worry me. I don't care about the racial tag because it's, an, it's a sustainability issue in, in relation to animals. So I don't fear that. And uh, like I said, I'm a big, ugly fella. If they want to come and chop me up, well, here I am. You know, they, I'm in the phone book. <laughs> but uh, believe me. I think it's really um, important yeah. also that, that uh, because you are accessible... Uh, makes it transparent, and I think that's what it is important. Because um, the first thing I noticed when 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 I sort of read about your your cause is that this has nothing to do um, with, with 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 someone being bitchy about the indigenous people. I understood that straight away because it is transparent, you know. And I think yep. that that's important. And I also think like you know, um, because people are waking up to issues, they know who is genuine and who isn't. You know, the only yeah. thing that, 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 that obviously that is important to highlight is um, people need to be made more available here in my neck of the wood about what a dugong actually is. <laughs> obviously, yeah. when you said uh, yeah. a manatee, that then, then people, because see, people need to connect at some level. They, uh, they probably yeah. ha- find it easier to connect with the turtle side of things, you know, um, than with the, the dugong side of things because we don't have them, in a way, you know. Yeah. And I think when people do understand, you know, where I'm coming from, and like I said, I've copped a lot of flack, but when I was on the Indigenous Radio, and I'm talking about National Indigenous Radio, which goes right through Australia, right through the centre, right through Darwin, right through Western Australia, Victoria, the whole the whole place, and the islands, Cook Islands, so- Solomon Islands, Torres Strait, and I was able to spend an hour in the studio and explain to the Indigenous interviewer um, exactly where I was coming from and exactly what I was worrying about with the animals. By the end of that, I got all the, the, the hugs and... And then today, this was two days later, um, they had the, they call it Talk Black because not like Talk Back, they call it Talk Black because they're Indigenous. Um, there was a lot of people ringing in today actually praising me and saying they can understand now where I'm coming from. So um, when they realise it's an animal issue and not just someone trying to take their rights off them, I'm all yeah. for their rights as long as what they're taking is sustainable. Okay. If it's not sustainable, it must stop. There's no argument because I'm not going to argue over a tradition against the existence, total existence of an animal. And like you said, a dugong is a manatee. If they get that in their head, they know what I'm arguing about. They know the infrequent. They breed like an elephant. If they bred every week like a like a <laughs> fish or like a rabbit, there'd be no problem. But when they're only having one calf and the calf stays on that mother suckling milk for 18 months and stays with her for four or five years and, and they only have one calf every five to seven years and there's only 50,000 yeah, I mean, in the know, whole you, world... Obviously, uh, you know, you just you just have to do the math. Uh, it's it's easy enough to 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 see that. But I think the other thing is that it, it's good that you as you mentioned this because obviously, um, when you talk about the indigenous people, it's not all of them that do that. Um, you know, and it's not all of them that would probably um, uh, condone it either. So that's good that you get that you get support there because if you get support support from within the ranks of the indigenous people, that probably makes your life easier. But um, let's get back to the international. Uh, um, stage of, of things. Um, yep. Where are you at at the moment? Um, are, are, do you do you have real support from outside of Australia, um, or or do you have an idea of what people should be doing? Because there are different ways of doing this. You could have people that uh, do their own groups and just have a sort of a spin-off group to yours in their own country. What do you think would work best? I find the medium really, I've flogged the Epoch Times and the New York Times. I've been published in the New York Times. The English newspapers, I send it to all their editors. I try to get that that way and so do all my supporters. I found that Facebook with the likes of the Ocean Defenders with Oriana Kalama. Yeah, which, a, which, uh, I spoke to her actually on my show. 
she's coming out here to meet Bob, and she's going to bring her ship out here. That'll, that'll get us more attention. But, you know, there's 21,000 members on her site, and she's got about 5,000 on her own. Yeah. I'm finding through through Facebook, I'm getting massive support, and I can check the statistics on my site to see what countries. And we're getting Sweden, we're getting England, we're getting America, you know. Like, it's getting bigger all the time Good. because of these other mediums. And, and like I said, a show like yourself, who's going to have that, um, that, that airtime on that special day. Um, but I have all of the government ministers in opposition here absolutely um, behind me, 110%. They've already made uh, government commitments that if and when they're in power in 18 months or two years' time that there will be moratoriums and, and that they'll ban it completely if it's not sustainable. Now, I will pressure the government into change it. I don't have any doubt at all that I'm going to win this because I'm such a persistent, pig-headed bloke. And like you said, the bigger we can get it out on the international stage, and I'm working on Greenpeace and Pew and Wilmer Society, and I'm working on them embarrassing them because they've said nothing about this issue because they have bigger agendas. They try to lock up the entire Coral Sea or they're trying to get to Cape York, which is bigger than England, yeah, yeah, uh, which yeah. is only a tiny tiny tip of um, <laughs> Australia, up the very top tip where it nearly collects to uh, Indonesia. They're going to lock that up under World Heritage listing now. Uh, they've got bigger agendas. When they're finished locking all that, they'll come back after the Indigenous people. So I try to convince them, which is, is dead correct. If we have a moratorium now, determine if it's sustainable, the tr tradition can continue. But, you know, at one, one stage, either this year, next year, 10 years, it'll be banned because you can't but, keep but, killing but, 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 but the important thing is that, you know, obviously you were saying that, that you have a lot of support, yet it's not solved yet. And um, so, given, uh, given given the time problems that that you have, I mean, every you know, every I know it sounds like a cliche, but every life is valuable. So, um, every dugong uh, uh, ought to be saved. I know it's not realistic. Um, so, are these people that support you, and it's it's all good when you're in the limelight. You know, uh, uh, no offense to politicians, but every time someone is in the limelight, you find them there too. Uh, is there real <laughs> tangible <laughs> support in a way? Yes, I, I think I've created such a tsunami of emotion. I don't think this can ever go away, and Good. and we're getting we're getting um, you know uh, national attention nearly every day, and and speeches in Parliament. It's there's so many people who watch all of those mediums and now becoming aware of it, contacting me for like yourself for for media interviews and awareness, and oh they're sorry they didn't know what was going on. There's people connecting. We've got a, a current affairs show where 60 minutes have contacted me here. Um, we've got those sort of shows. And when it gets onto those those sort of stages, America picks it up for their 60 minutes. And then, you know, it'll get out. I, look, I know every life's precious. No one knows more than me because I see them dying here every day and I get videos sent to me. I got sent a video on Tuesday night showing a dugong tied up to a, a tinny, which is a small aluminium boat by a rope. The tide went out. It cooked in the sun alive. And I got a man who filmed it on his mobile phone and it was crying its head off. Now, I know this stuff's happening every day and it saddens me, but I, I just know that, it's a slow process because of the indigenous aspect, but the quicker I can get the indigenous people on the side, which I think I had a great hand in doing on Tuesday, that the solution will come sooner rather than later. Yeah. And I also think it's probably much easier to pass a law uh, if they don't even object. <laughs> yeah, well, if they pass a law or have a moratorium, I then get 21 million sets of eyes that are around the coast of Australia because rather than looking at someone... Indigenous now cutting up or killing a dugong and saying, oh, they're allowed to do it because it's tradition. They'll say there's a moratorium in place. I will report you. Yeah, and that's excellent. what I'll have. I'll have all of those fresh eyes, all those people aware of the problem, turning into animal policemen. And that's what I've got to get. I've got to get an army of people out there. And international pressure, like shows like yourself, that can say, now, we're now aware that they're murdering the dugong manatee in Australia in uncontrolled, unlimited numbers. There's no permit system at all. And yet it speaks of it in the native title, but there is none. They don't issue a permit. If you're indigenous, you can go anywhere you like, jump in a boat and go out and kill as many as you like. And they murder them with shotguns. They murder the whole pod. You know, They just go out and do what they like and because they can. And, and this is also now, where, where your whole racism uh, or racist uh, uh, argument then falls flat because if they are above the law, then that's racist in, in itself. And but you can also the like, go down that road because white. they have no other argument. There's, there's, you know, just like you're saying, like you know, if, if it is sustainable, it's another thing. And that's important, and um, because obviously there are different ways of campaigning. Oftentimes you have campaigners that campaign because the animals are cute, and then you have, um, uh, and I'm not saying manatees or, or, or dugongs and, and turtles are not cute, but I think what is important is that 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 you're not coming from that angle and saying like you know, um, um, uh, don't eat 
this piece isn't done, it does be, all you want to make sure is that, that they stay alive and that the numbers are regulated. I think it's just important to highlight that. Yeah, it is. And, I, and I'll probably shock your audience now. I've never ever seen a turtle or a dugong in the wild. Uh, I just got upset when I heard they butchered 14 of them in one hit and I researched it and then I, they were up in uproar here in Australia because they killed a whale somewhere and I thought, what a lob of, of hypocrites we are and that's what started me on the campaign. I still have never seen one. It shocks people but I've never seen one. I've never seen a whale, uh, you know, for instance, I've seen a couple of dolphins uh, uh, around the Irish shores, but you know what I mean, I actually also think like, you know, that oftentimes <laughs> when you campaign about things, it really isn't important whether or not you have seen them in the wild, it just makes sense to keep them there. Yeah, and that's exactly the argument I run. And like I said, I went into the Indigenous radio station studio where I could have been cut up for toast. They, they could have set me up with a million callers. I only had two callers in the hour, and both of those praised the work that I was doing. Because I explained myself what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, and there's nothing in it for coal, I won't be running for the Prime Minister of Australia or anything like that or the local mayor. I have no ambition whatsoever other than to stop this, this carnage that's going on. And if people realise... You know, the vulnerability of this species, which I'm making people aware of through the, the efforts of Bob Irwin and uh, the Shadow Mist Environment, Greg Hunt, and um, and others, and Glen Elms, the state ministers, um, and Bobby Irwin, you know, if they understand where we're coming from, it will stop, I'm sure. I'm Actually, while I'm talking to you, I'm watching television. They just had their National Steve Irwin Day on with uh, Bindi <laughs> Irwin and, and uh, Little Bob and, and Terry Irwin on TV. <laughs> And we're, actually, me, we're, we're actually pretty doing, pretty. I know it's a bit cheeky actually, but, but, but now we're sp speaking about this, we're actually raffling off a few prizes <laughs> on, uh, on our show, including yep. a, a handmade uh, a dolphin that has been used in the protest uh, on November 5th. You think you can get me an autograph by Bob? I can certainly get that to you. And, um, Perfect. And look, he's a lovely, a lovely bloke. Like I said, he, he shirks the media, but with, with Steve's passing, he's had to come out of sort of out in the public arena, which he hates, he doesn't like to talk, but he yeah. sees himself, and we do too, he's the, really the last voice. I've got another man that's very famous in Australia, a book called Ben Croft, he's done a lot of um, international series and, um, and shows around Australia, and he supports me sending me photos, he's a private man now, he's in his 70s, um, but there's a lot of support from a lot of people, a lot of people want this to change for a long time, but there's been no one big enough, ugly enough, or <laughs> silly enough to, to do it, and, and, and unfortunately or fortunately it's me, so. You know what, um, it's actually funny, I'm, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you get a chance to check my website, because obviously I have a bit of problems with my computer every time I, I, I black the camera in, the computer starts to freeze. Uh, so it's a, it's a bit of a slow one, but if you look at my, even though I'm only five, uh, five eleven and a half, you know, um, we're not too dissimilar, <laughs> the two of us, <laughs> you know. And and and, 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 I've been, and people said that to me a lot uh, because I'm this big German fella with this harsh accent. Um, I think that's why sometimes I can talk about things a bit more powerful. So I think you know it's all good yeah. in the end. I've actually just um, re-emailed um, Judy Irwin, who she types and Bob talks because Bob's oh, yeah. his computer computer illiterate. And I told them that I'm doing an interview in England at the moment now on Skype, and she just sent back, "Wow!" Oh, brilliant! So, uh, yeah, and give her give her my regards. You know, I mean, the, the, this this is you know, um, obviously obviously we all watch it on, on on television, and I thought you know, um, when 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 Steve died, uh, the whole uh, ceremony with his daughter and stuff, they are so courageous, um, the the way they sort of you know, at, at least to the public, um. Uh, held held themselves together. I thought like you know it was just amazing. I wouldn't be able to, yeah. you know. So I'm, I'm a bit of a cry baby, um, yeah. I, have, I have to admit, you know. But I thought that that's just that's just great that they that they knew that that it's important to have his work continue because you know to be honest, um, uh, there 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 were still people out there that thought like oh yeah you know um he's just a big show off but he has done a lot and he's 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 rightly to be remembered as one of the greatest activists of all times. I, I think he stands alone. I don't think there's anyone that put a patch on him. He did more through his wild antics, his crikey. Yeah. Um, and 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 the br and the brave and foolish things he did, um, he did some some crazy stuff. But yeah. he highlighted <laughs> to the whole world, you know, the plight of animals, the orangutan, yeah, yeah. Um, all sorts of creatures all over the world. Exactly. And you know, he has to have every, every, he has to have our ad admiration. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, the very fact that that people started. Um, not loving probably, but uh, respecting uh, animals like like uh, uh, crocodiles, uh, you know, which are usually quite hated by people, um, is is great, and and he definitely did that, you know. So I have to let you go now, and I will definitely make sure I I I, I Facebook you my my address, <laughs> and we put up yeah, your thanks, um, your um, website on the blog, so that people know, yep. and it's good so people can contact you anytime if they wanted to. <laughs> 